will not shut up. I will not, 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 I will not shut up. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lou Cooney. So today we are talking about Diddy's situation, the latest on that, and the allegations that have been brought against him. And also, particularly, we want to look at T.D. Jakes' involvement in this whole situation and how that brings a reproach upon the name of Christ, and it is just not a good look. So before we do, man, if y'all like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, sharing the video, doing all the stuff that lets YouTube know that you like content like this helps the channel greatly and is much appreciated. Without further ado, though, let's take a look at this clip so we can get up to speed on where we at. All right. So as we know, Diddy's two properties were raided. I mean, these massive sprawling estates were raided at, at the same time. OK, so we know about that, that that happened in L.A. and Miami. And this is in connection with all these allegations. Right. So he decided to post. This is how he broke his media silence. He broke, posted a picture of his adorable daughter here. And I don't know why he would do that, bring her into this whole situation, but he did that and muted all the comments of that post. And uh, this just gives us a few further details here. The Obviously, the, the main person making these allegations is Rodney Jones, known as Little Rod, who claims a lot of stuff went down, right? He claims a whole bunch of stuff went down and named names, and people's names are in there. And... One of the names that we know is in there is the name of T.D. Jakes. World-renowned Dallas pastor T.D. Jakes is named in a federal lawsuit against musician Sean Diddy Combs. It's followed by a producer that worked with Combs. It discusses how the singer planned to leverage his relationship with the bishop to soften the impact on his public image of Casey Ventura's lawsuit. Ventura is a former girlfriend of Combs who filed her own lawsuit in November alleging abuse. So we've heard from various media outlets, including like CBS, the idea that this whole Puffy getting together with T.D. Jakes thing was very strategic, right? He, like he did it so that he would look good in the eyes of people by standing next to and being closely associated with somebody who's supposed to be a man of God, somebody who people consider to be a positive figure. So somehow that positivity would rub off on him and people would see him being associated with T.D. Jakes and think, oh, well, he can't be that bad after all. So that was the strategy behind it. Now, from Diddy's perspective, that's just a calculated move. But from T.D. Jakes' perspective, you got to wonder, why is this guy who's supposed to be a pastor involving himself with someone like Diddy? T.D. Jakes has proven over and over again to be somebody who wants to be friendly with the world, to reach out beyond the church walls, and in doing so, we can see how he's basically trying to get his fingers into different things. One of those things being uh, producing movies, right? Producing movies, and we've seen how his collaborations with Tyler Perry have been seen by people and gained him a lot of respect out there in, let's just say, people who watch black movies, the black movie culture or black culture in general, that's not just church culture, but at large, right? So he has managed to do that. And in so doing, he's gotten this positive image going in the eyes of several people. However, if you're anybody who has at least some level of discernment and you've seen his ministry, you know that this is a ministry that is built on the false prosperity gospel. Like that is just inescapable. You've, we've seen him uh, be somebody who is firmly planted in heretical teachings from modalism to you name it, okay, to full-blown prosperity, to trying to cast out demons that didn't work, weird stuff. And he's just done all this stuff and yet managed to build his following, continued to do so. And people love him. People love him. But we have to have discernment and be able to look at what he's doing and say, is this of God? And judging by his desire to be seen, his desire to be heard and to I, I honestly, I think rise in prominence and importance um, in the church world, but also in the public, in the eyes of the public, I think that that desire led him to embrace being around someone like Diddy 
And I hope that that's just the extent of it. I truly do hope that's the extent of it, because if this turns out to be that he was also doing this so that he could be engaging in very unsavory acts, then that is going to, I believe, do a great harm. Obviously, it's going to do a great harm to his ministry. But the thing is, you have to remember that even though sound Christians could tell you that, hey, like this dude that people are are like raising up over here, this dude that people are applauding and celebrating, we don't really bang with this dude. You know what I'm saying? We don't really amen this dude, okay? We can say all that, but you know that because people have this perception of the church, there's a lot of negative perceptions of the church that go around that whenever these prominent pastors do stuff, it only adds to that rhetoric and reinforces those negative stereotypes that people have of the church. And so that is the danger that I think that he is going to uh, inflict upon people who are in the church. We're basically going to get caught in the crossfire because of potential acts that he was engaged in, alleged, I have to say alleged, I'm, I, you know, alleged acts that he was engaged in, but let alone just his association with Diddy is going to have us caught in the crossfire. And then it's back to those conversations of, hey, man, you see how these Christians are fake. They do this, they do that. On the side, they, on one end, they're talking about, you know, God is this, God is that, the greatness of God and the goodness of God. But then behind closed doors, we really know what it's all about. And then it becomes all pastors are like this. Now, we know that people are going to paint the church with a broad brush, and we are going to reject that because that's just a foolish argument, right? Just to say that, okay, there's a, there's one bad apple here, to, or there are some bad apples, but they don't represent the whole body of Christ. Let's take a quick look at the latest clip that he had from his Easter service. There's one part in there that I want us to check out, man, because I think that this shows the sort of adamant, defiant spirit that he has through all of this, and that we've seen this displayed even when he talked about only needing to repent if these allegations are true and said it in such a flippant way. So we've seen some defiance from him. And in the direct context of this clip that you're going to see, he's talking about uh, being shut up, Jesus's body being shut up in the tomb. He's talking about the crucifixion. But then he makes this statement. And there's something about it, knowing that this is happening on this weekend where these allegations have come out and no doubt he knows that his name is named in there. There's something about this that seems to say more than him just trying to preach this sermon. So let's check this out real quick. It was the same things that the slave masters used when they left bodies hanging from the trees and somebody called it strange fruit. Because when the fruit grows strange on the tree, the people grow quiet in the house. And the devil wants to shut you up. That's all the trouble is about. He's trying to shut your mouth. He doesn't need your car. He doesn't need your career. He doesn't need your house. He doesn't need your children. All he's doing is using a tool to shut your mouth. But somebody in this room has made up in their mind, I will not shut up. Be shut down, but I won't shut up. I may be tied down, but I won't shut up. I may be broke. I will not, 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 I will not shut up. Now, that was a lot, okay? That was a lot, and it was pretty bizarre to see him, like, screaming in some very weird way that seemed like he was in pain and all that that we just saw. That was a display, a performance that he just gave, and 
it, it just seems to be that there's something more behind that. You know that when things happen in the public, people who have a public platform are going to go on their uh, soapbox or the platform that they're given at times and use those platforms to kind of give subliminal messages. And I, I honestly feel like this might be the case with that particular clip in this sermon. I will not shut up. I, I, I don't know if this was just simply about not shutting up and speaking about God. I, I just, I don't know. It just the timing that this is occurring and he gives this message when there's all this stuff going on around uh, Diddy and his involvement and the raids have just happened. So at the time of this recording, he's doing this basically a day after, a couple days after everything goes really public and this whole media storm just goes into full blown uh, chaos about Diddy's situation. So, you know, take that for what y'all think it is. I just wonder what's going on here. If this is just merely about not shutting up for the Lord. So the main concern in all of this is the reproach that is brought upon the body of Christ. When prominent pastors do things that are unsavory, that are definitely ungodly and that those things become exposed. And I have a man, there's, there's, there's a concern that there is, no smoke without fire when it comes to this level of federal investigation and this kind of co these collaborated efforts to go down and lock down Diddy's homes and raid them and all this stuff, man, it, it just seems like there's too much. That is too many resources being spent for something that has no merit. And so in my mind, I, I look at this and it feels as though there is something really here, something really uh, dark and something sinister happening here that is going to be revealed. And my only hope is that T.D. Jakes' name, the level of involvement that he has, doesn't end up being something that is just completely wicked. That is my hope in this thing. I hope I really hope that maybe he's he was just in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time and he was associated with things, but the way it's looking things are not looking good because why would your name be amongst a group of other people who have been in some cases there's been allegations that they've been involved or they were did he had his dealings with them, unsavory dealings with them. And so, man, it's it's just it's not good. It's not good right now. But this is what happens when you fall in love with the world and you make unwise decisions just as a pastor, making unwise decisions, making alliances with people who don't represent what you represent or what you're supposed to represent in this case. And you find yourself caught up in situations like this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I would love to hear from y'all. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, all right? God bless y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.